All right, so uh, the last video, we were just talking about the moon. Um, I, I do want to mention the, the formation of the moon. Let's see, is that the next? Um, uh, yeah, all right. So, so, so all, the, um, all the craters, all the impacts, uh, the, well, the, the craters are impacts. There, there are things that have collided, um, like asteroids, comets, um, you know, di different debris that's passing through the solar system. Um, it crashes into the moon because the moon has no atmosphere. Um, whatever hits the moon, you, you know, the, it, it displays the impact. You know, that impact is is displayed. Um, this, of course, is uh, you know only the United States has sent uh, people to the moon. Only twelve uh, pe twelve people have walked on the on the surface of the moon. Um, that was in the nineteen six late nineteen sixties. And then early 1970s, the last person to walk on the moon was in 1972. Um, and NASA actually does have plans on going back to the moon. Um, and uh, oh, perhaps even, um, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, some, some people have talked about uh, mining the moon. There's, there's certain precious metals uh, that you find um, that, that are used, for example, in... Uh, in semiconductor technology, um, that uh, that um, you know, uh, di different different. Uh, well, we find different um, these different uh, metals on this on the moon, and we could we could actually mine these. Um, and and you know the, that that we I don't know that you need humans to actually be able to do that, um, but but the. NASA's goal is to actually send people back um, and uh, to walk on the moon. And um, the first group will, will definitely have um, a woman because it's only been, it was only uh, 12 men that walked on the moon. Uh, all right, uh, the formation of the moon. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, the, the, the theory that we have um, that, origi that actually originated in the 1960s and was laughed at at first. People thought it was a joke. Um, was is the giant is what's called the giant impact theory, um, because you know back back in the in the sixties and, and and earlier than that, most people thought that the the um, the solar system was basically the way it is today, and and you know it's it, there was there was not um, collisions or, or collisions were ex exceptionally rare nowadays. Um, in, in fact, because of our trips, our oops, our trips to the moon, collecting moon rocks and analyzing them, um, we we can safely say that uh, th th indeed that's how, exactly how the moon formed. There was an object roughly the size of Mars um, that collided with the early Earth and um, turned you know completely molten and and co caused the Earth to become molten and then. Um, the some of the material that that af, after the collision um, orbited the Earth and then coalesced um, came together through gravitation and formed the Moon. All right, uh, the Moon used to be it used to be um, a lot closer to the Earth than it is today, um, and it and it took a lot shorter amount of time to orbit the Earth. Right. Uh, at any rate. Um, Let's see. Uh, so, so you know, when we know right now that the moon, the moon is getting further and further from the Earth, um, and and uh, it's actually the the uh, the moon is actually through the through its tidal effect on the Earth, it's actually slowing the Earth's rotation. So the Earth, when the when this collision originally occurred, um, and, and you you can add, you can you know add up this quantity called angular momentum. There, there's this concept called the, the conservation of angular momentum, which is basically the idea that, you know, if you ever watch an ice skater and she's spinning around and she pulls her arms in towards towards the center of her body, um, she will start to spin faster. You've, you've seen that before. Um, and so that, that idea is called the conservation of angular momentum. And so we can look at the moon earth system and add up all the angular momentum, which would have been the same, you know, now as it was, you know, uh, four billion years ago when when this collision took place. 
So uh, we, we, we know that um, from that, the, the Earth used to spin around on its, its axis once every five hours. It took, it took four, so one a day used to just be five hours. And then because of this, because of this, uh, what's called tidal breaking, so, so it's, it's, and it's really slow. It's not something you'd ever notice in your own lifetime or the lifetime of your grandchildren or great, great grandchildren or anything like that. Um, the, the, the effect of, of, of tidal breaking on the earth is something like, um, oh, I forget exactly what the number is. It's something like three milliseconds. So, so the earth slows its rotation about three milliseconds once every century. Right. So think about that. Once every hundred years, it's it slows the Earth's rotation by um, 0 0.003 seconds. Again, you're never going to notice that in your lifetime or the lifetimes of grandchildren or anything like that. Um, it, it's over the course of billions of years that you start to notice that. And so right now, our, our rotation rate is close to 24 hours. It's actually 23 hours 55 minutes and so many seconds um and and as 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 the moon gets a little bit further and further away from us we're slowing down um you know it, it's it's still it's a very slow slow down um all right let's talk about the phases of the moon of course um you should be very familiar with this by now uh with with the, with our project um, but but I'll but I'll go through it um, all the same. All right. So let's assume the sun is coming over from 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 the uh, from the right hand side over here, and of course the 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 moon is in orbit around the Earth, um, and and then and of course the moon Earth system is in orbit around the sun. But for, for right now we're going to ignore that um, because it doesn't really have anything to do with the phases. Um, so when the when the moon when the moon and the sun are in the same portion of the sky, now they, they don't usually line up. Like the, the way this is this is looking is as though there, there's going to be a solar eclipse. Um, that's that's actually rare. Um, so so it turns out that the moon. So let me let me just do this with the mouse. The moon and the Earth are are the moon's orbit is tilted with respect to the Earth. So usually the moon's shadow is above the earth or below the earth it's it's always there but it's it's rarely actually hits the earth and when it does touch the earth when the moon's shadow touches the earth of course that's called a solar eclipse um and it's usually over water all right but but uh, you know sometimes it's over land like the one in 2017 that passed over south carolina all right so anyhow um so, so when the moon and the and the and the sun are in the same location in the sky, um, not on top of each other, but um, the same look, general location, that's called a new moon, right? And during that time, you can't see the moon, right? Because, of course, um, you know, you only see the moon because of the sunlight, right? Um, and then, you know, after a day or two, uh, the, after new moon, so we're going to start with new moon, a day or two after the new moon, the, the moon has moved in its orbit slightly, and so that you can see a little bit of a crest. Um, and so that's and because as time goes on, that crest is going that that crescent will get bigger. It's called a waxing crescent. So that you know the next night after this, um, this is not drawn very well. Uh, this is actually a really poor. Uh, this is, so the, so here here's the new moon. This is the, the this picture right here that shows a crescent. The next night it's going to be more right. There, there'll be more of the moon that's illuminated, and so for for about a week or so after after new moon, you're going to get the first quarter moon. And first quarter means half the moon is illuminated, and then the day after um, the first quarter. So first quarter, notice the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon are at ninety degrees with respect to each other. And then the next night, the moon's going to be over here, and so that's 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 what this is over here. Um, this this fourth uh, fourth picture. So so that's called a waxing because you know it's it's, it's ever increasing a waxing gibbous. Gibbous means more than half of the moon is illuminated. Okay, um, 
and then and it's waxing because the next night it's going to be even more of the moon that's illuminated okay and then um so that, that it goes for about a week roughly a week from first quarter to full moon right and so um on on you know about a week after first quarter you're going through all through waxing gibbous and then when the, the sun sets and the moon exactly rises then the moon and the sun are at, at 180 degrees from each other um, that's of course a full moon right that's what we mean by a full moon the next night after the full moon um so you know the the, the sun is going to set but the moon won't won't have risen it will not have risen over the um, the eastern horizon yet. You have to wait about 50 minutes or so, right? Because, of course, the moon is moving in its orbit around the sun. So it's not exactly in the same spot. So 50 minutes or so after sunset, um, if you looked exactly to the eastern horizon, um, somewhere along the eastern horizon, there's going the, the moon will peak up. And then over, you know, over the next hour or so, it will rise higher and higher in the sky. And so that is what's called a, a waning gibbous. So waning means the next night it's going to be less of the moon that's illuminated, right? So, so um, all right. Uh, and so that from, from full moon to what's called last quarter or also known as third quarter, um, that lasts for about a week. So you got about a week of waning gibbous. Um, and then, um, that then, of course, after that week is over, you have half the moon illuminated. Now, this is the moon that you see in the early morning. Um, it's, it's sometimes it's, in fact, easier to see this in the early morning um, is, is the, the, the last quarter. Right. And so. Um, uh, yeah, so, 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 you know, the, the uh, you'll, you'll get up in the morning and uh, you'll, you'll, when you see the moon. Um, all right, yeah, that, that that's it's very easy, much easier to see in the morning than waiting, you know, many many hours after after the sunset. I mean, you can still see it in, in, at nighttime, but sometimes it's easier to see in the morning. All right, anyhow, um, so that's first quarter, and then you're gonna have a week of waning gibbous, right? So that's the waning gibbous is when um, you know uh, less than half the moon is illuminated. And it's getting smaller and smaller as time goes on. Again, that's the one that you see in the morning, right? You'll, you'll see that one in the morning. Um, and uh, again, that la it goes from, from about a week from last quarter to new moon again. And so the, dur during that entire week, that's all um, the, the waning crescent. All right. Hopefully you've got all, you, all your pictures. Remember, project part one is this this part right here, the, 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 the waxing crescent project part two is first quarter and, and waxing gibbous, um, project part three, full moon to, um, and, and waning gibbous part four is last quarter and waning crescent. All right. Um, the moon spins about its axis, uh, and it revolves around the earth, of course. Um, during the time of new moon, the sun is always between, let's see, so this, during the time of new moon, um, the sun is between the earth and the moon. The moon is between the, is between the sun and the earth. Um, what the heck, is, let's see, what do they mean by that? Um, I, I guess what they're, they're asking is, is, um, from the Earth's perspective, when you when you look and, and there's and when it's a new moon, um, the moon is in the direction of the sun. All right. So so I, I don't like this in between the sun and the Earth, but that's actually what the answer is. Um, it, it's better to say the moon is in the same same location in the sky as the sun. That that's a better way of putting that one. All right. Um, yeah, so that's the answer. Um, during the time of the full moon, the, um, uh, I wish they wouldn't use this word be between, um, the sun is between the, uh, between the earth and the, I think that's the right answer. Um, let's see. So the, the earth is between the sun and, so 
so during, during yeah, yeah, 